Is your Caradina shrimp tank doomed to fail? Avoid these 10 mistakes. Let's discuss the top 10 most common mistakes that new Caradina shrimp owners make in this video. Welcome everyone. This is Ray from RW Aquarium Pages. I'm here to share my journey in planted aquariums, shrimp tanks, and everything in between. Caradina shrimp are popular in the aquarium hobby due to their unique appearance and relatively easy requirements. They are also known as bee or crystal shrimp. However, new owners can sometimes make mistakes that can harm the health and the well-being of their shrimp. In this video, we'll cover the top 10 most common mistakes new Caradina shrimp owners make and provide tips to how to avoid them. Number one, not letting the aquarium age or mature. One of the most critical steps in setting up any aquarium is cycling the tank. This process establishes a healthy balance of beneficial bacteria that break down the waste products in the water. Skipping this step can lead to poor water quality, which can be harmful to your shrimp. But aging a tank is slightly different after cycling your aquarium, it's best to age your aquarium for a few months to let the biofilm grow over the surface of the aquarium. Also, for green dust algae to populate on the walls. These two things provide food for the shrimp and the baby shrimp, and it's a sign of a healthy ecosystem, which shrimp thrive in. Don't rush into this and be patient, as this is one of the pillars of shrimp keeping. Number two, inadequate water changes. Caradina shrimp require clean water with stable parameters to thrive. New owners may underestimate the importance of performing regular water changes, leading to the accumulation of harmful substances like ammonia and nitrates. In some non-tested theory, it helps remove some of the hormones produced by the shrimp also. Although shrimp provide a very small and a very low bioload on the ecosystem, it's wise to perform a water change at the longest four weeks. I typically plan to perform a partial water change of around 5% weekly to maintain the water quality, or we can use the TDS method. This method is when the TDS of the aquarium rises by 15 parts per million, then it's time to do a water change. Last summer, I got lazy and didn't do a water change for three months. Although the shrimps survive, they didn't thrive. I don't recommend leaving a tank without water changes for three months. You can also say that stability is key. So for Caradina shrimp, I don't recommend more than 15 to 20% water changes each time in order to keep the water parameters as stable as possible. Number three, overfeeding. While it might be tempting to feed your shrimp frequently, overfeeding can lead to poor water quality and other health issues. Caradina shrimp require a varied diet that includes plant-based and protein-based foods. So try to provide them with a balance of different food types. Caradina shrimp, I've noticed, eat a lot less than Neocaradina shrimp. Then there's tangerine tigers with the tiger caradina species, which can be fed daily. They are so active and prolific. It's best to see how your colony reacts to the food and to see if they can finish any food within one to two hours. Any excess food I'd remove. You can adjust the quantity and the size of the piece of food as needed on your next feeding. Number four, not providing enough hiding places. Caradina shrimp are vulnerable to predation and can be stressed if they don't have enough hiding places to retreat to. 
Make sure you have plenty of cover, such as plant and rocks, to help your shrimp feel secure. If it's an ecosystem with fish, hiding spots will allow them to feel safer. Even in breeding tanks that aren't displayed showpieces, it's a good idea to have hiding spots for those hungry males ready to breed. And also, if there are more males than females, hiding spots will help the female feel safe during mating season. Number five, poor tank mates. Not all aquarium inhabitants are compatible with Caradina shrimp. Avoid keeping them with aggressive fish that may attack or eat them. For the sole purpose of breeding, I'd recommend shrimp-only tanks. For planted tanks or ecosystems, smaller fish will do okay with the shrimp, but be prepared that some shrimplets will get eaten. Some additional hiding spots will also help. Number six, using the wrong substrate. Caradina shrimp requires specific water parameters such as a specific pH and hardness. Using specific substrates that soften the water and acidifies it. These are called active substrates. Some examples are Akadama or Aegea Amazonia. These are some popular choices. Avoid using gravel or sand or inert substrate and opt for specialized shrimp substrate, but for active soil instead. A more advanced technique is to actually use the inert substrate and then use CO2 with a controller to keep the pH around 5.5 to 6.0. This method also works very well, and the substrate doesn't need to be replaced as active substrate does deplete. Number seven, purchasing poor quality shrimp. Quality shrimp matters and goes a long way. Unsexed juvenile shrimp is the best and safest bet when starting a new colony. Some unethical breeders sell adult shrimp that are past their breeding age and on the end of their lives. Some breeders sell only males and keep all the females. I've talked about this in my previous videos about cheap and poor quality shrimp versus high quality shrimp. Number eight, inadequate oxygen levels. Caradina shrimp need adequate oxygen levels to breathe and low oxygen levels can lead to health problems. Make sure to provide sufficient aeration or surface agitation to promote gas exchange. Some people use oxidators to increase the level of oxygen in their tanks. I personally haven't tried them but might one day to see the effects on baby shrimp survival and adult shrimp behavior. Number nine, not quarantining your new shrimp. I'd say most shrimp keepers don't quarantine their new shrimp. It's essential to quarantine new shrimp before introducing them to your main colony to avoid introducing diseases or parasites. Isolate them for at least two weeks and observe them for any signs of illness before adding them to your main tank. This holds true more for neocaridina shrimp than caridina shrimp. But either way, it's best to observe and not possibly hurt your existing colony of shrimp. Number 10, not researching enough. Finally, new owners may make mistakes due to the lack of research or preparation. Make sure to read up on Caradina shrimp care and behavior before bringing them home. This can help you avoid many common mistakes and create the best environment for your shrimp. The Caradina shrimp, B and Crystal, have different water parameters than neo shrimp, which are commonly known as cherry. In conclusion, New Caradina shrimp owners can avoid common mistakes by properly cycling the tank, performing regular water changes, feeding a balanced diet, providing enough cover, avoiding incompatible tank mates, using the right substrate, 
not purchasing poor quality shrimp, promoting oxygenation, quarantining new shrimp, and researching the proper care. With the right knowledge and preparation, you can enjoy a thriving Caradina shrimp colony in your aquarium. Do you have any other common tips or mistakes that new Caradina shrimp owners should know about? Let's discuss and learn together. I absolutely love sharing my experiences, success and failures with everyone. It's just so exciting to document my journey in planted shrimp tanks and share it with others. Stay tuned for more informative videos as I've got plenty of content in store for you. Thanks for watching and listening to my rambles. I really appreciate it. Have an awesome day. Thanks for watching.